It's Friday. Um, I had to go over and get my coffee cup. Um, so we have. <laughs> so today was going to be a training video, <laughs> and I got out to the field, and Willie and I started doing our warm-ups, and we went through the ladder, and I was going to set up the camera, and not snow, but ice pellets started falling from the sky, like it started hailing, and then it kind of got sleety, so. <laughs> was not going to be like it was looking perfectly cool like for like an hour it was like nothing barely a couple drops of rain I was like I handle you know cameras handled more than that I was not going to handle ice coming down <laughs> so yeah sorry we'll try to get that in for next week uh so the shout out this week um just his name Timothy Kinch got it I'm like pointing at my computer over there because I'm looking straight at it. Let's see. I kind of had to come up with something on the fly. And I realized that there's something that isn't necessarily talked about. I think I did a video on this before. This kind of goes hand in hand with like relationships. Because this works good in life in general. You're going to be told no a lot. The idea. The thing is, a lot of people want to take that personally. They want to take it that, no, it's an attack upon yourself. Well, maybe, maybe. I'm not ruling that out, but it might be. But you have to look at the issue. If you've got, like, a girl you really like, and she goes, and you ask her to prom, and she says, no, that might be against you. It might just be the fact that she thinks she can get something better. There's whole movies a part of that where like the guy that she winds up with at the end of the movie asked her at the beginning and she's like, no, because she's trying to attain something herself that's unattainable. Then there's the kind of no, which is like a hard, fast no. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like do not enter, hazardous, flammable, those kind of things. And then there's always those times like, we'll relate this now to football, where you're not getting put on the field. And in practice, you've been working your butt off. In fact, during practice, when you've been doing seven on seven, or you're linemen, and you guys are doing lineman drills, and you're sitting there in a three tech, and you're completely beating the guard, like you're just defeating him left and right, one of your own teammate guards, and then what happens during the game? You get sat. It's basically being told no. Is that against you? Eh, not necessarily. The coach may just, the coach may have favoritism. The coach may see something you don't. The coach may see something that's not actually there. Um, people, I've been sat as a cornerback many times. Whole games. Suited up for a whole game. Nothing. Never put me in. Happened multiple times a couple years ago. Happened a couple times, uh, actually a couple years ago. Uh, the vlogs show it. I seriously went out to the center of the field and I sat at the dead center of the field. One of my coaches asked what was up and I was like, just getting my field time. I, 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 I was petty. I sat on the entire sideline, none. There were other times where I finally got on the field at cornerback and after like two plays, safety on the other side got beat deep and suddenly we were not three touchdowns up, we were only two touchdowns up. And it was like, oh, well, the, the score's too close. Let's take Theo off. I wasn't that bad, but the coach saw me as possibly being that bad. I was a liability, you know? Why did it happen last year that I wasn't on the field until, like, fourth quarter? I don't know. I can't read a coach's mind. But I definitely felt rejected. Definitely felt like there was, you know, constantly saying, no, you ain't good enough. It's self-worth. But that's the thing. You got to know what you're worth. Just because someone says no doesn't make them define your worth, you know? Just because like a girl says, no, you don't go to prom to me, doesn't mean you swear off girls and that you're never gonna get one in your life. Trust me, there is enough teen movies about that, you know? And there's, I mean, technically, I mean, I don't really like to bring this up, but look, you know, look at Rudy. To an extent, he was an outside linebacker. In theory, he was a linebacker on thing, but he definitely played defensive line a heck of a lot more. So he's probably more of a pass rusher. And he worked his butt off in high school. And then he went to Notre Dame and he worked his butt off as a walk-on. Never got on, never made the team whatsoever. Just kept practicing and practicing and practicing. Kept getting told no. 
And finally, I think in the last game, he suited up. But it took until the very last play of the game, and they finally put him in. And he wound up, you know, making a play, and everybody cheered for him because it was like the biggest heart of the team. It's not really a great story, but think about that. He kept getting told no, and he worked his butt off in multiple ways. Just because you're getting told no doesn't mean you aren't worth it because not everybody sees what you see. And maybe perhaps you're on a team that's not fit for you. And I know as a high schooler, you can't necessarily choose that. You can't just be hopping high schools to do that. In semi-pro, yeah, sure. You got enough teams around you, you can hop teams to find the coach that'll put you on because you're good enough. Sometimes you might be on the crappiest team. And sometimes you may even go out to the literally crappiest team in your semi-pro league and you don't even get put on the field then. Is that because you're crappier than the crappiest team? No, it means the coach doesn't know what they're talking about. You, you know? Nothing against all coaches, but there are some coaches out there that ain't got a clue what they're doing. And I brought that up in the book video about complete linebacking as well as complete wide receiver and all that stuff. It's always helpful to look at outside resources because your coach isn't omniscient. By the way, it means all knowing. <laughs> they, so getting another perspective helps. And again, just because your coach isn't putting you in doesn't mean that. And when you do get in, even if you are proving that you are a better asset on the field than, let's say for me, for me example. Let's say, you know, I don't get starting outside linebacker. I'm second string. So I get, you know, I get in, yeah, whenever, uh, you know, cycle linebackers around. Every play that I'm in, for some reason, you know, I'm in every coverage. I have bat downs galore and I've got a couple pick, you know, I've got a pick or two going on. Because I'm just at that right spot, but they still keep me at second string. What do I do? I don't really do anything because it's technically coach's prerogative. And just like a job, you got to deal with what your boss does. What your boss says. Because in the hierarchy, your boss knows better. Tactically, that's how things go. And you got to deal with it. I don't, I don't want to get things too terribly political, but, you know, there's a lot of people in this country that give credence to our current leader because they're like, well, he's the president, got to do what he says. And all, 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 you know, all I'm going to really say on that whole thing is, yeah, yeah, and, and the king of England ruled the colonies for a while, but we still threw tea in the harbor. That's about as political as I'm going to get. Just because you get told no does not mean it's the end. Technically, the only no that is final is the question, is the, is the, is the answer to the question, can we recover to homeostasis. Your body says no, and then you die. That's the only no that will kill you, is when you have obtained an irrecoverable level of homeostasis, anti-homeostasis. It's not gonna kill you, you know? And when you're applying to colleges, and this goes, Willie talked about this one with colleges. Don't put all your eggs in one basket for one college. You know, you're probably, and if you, because if you do, if you get told no by that college, what are you going to do? You got to put your, you got to cast your, you got to cast a wide net. You got to cast, you got to get a bunch of offers. You got to put things out there. Make sure you're the one saying no. Because if you put out to three colleges and you get three no's, well, that's it. If you put out, you know, to 12 colleges and you get, 11 no's, well, guess what? You got a yes. Even if you get three yeses, you know, nine no's and three yeses out of 12 colleges. Well, then which one do you pick? Well, guess what? You've got yeses. You don't have a yes. You have a, you have yeses. You don't have to be desperate. You know, cast a wide net. Get multiple involved. Just because the first one doesn't say Yes, doesn't mean that the whole rest of them, I mean, how many D1 colleges are there? How many D1A colleges are there? How many D2 colleges are there? How many D3 colleges are there? Oh my God. How many JUCOs are there? Wide net a college ball. Guys from D2 and D3 still go to the NFL. They may not necessarily, you know, go through the combine because they're the top whatever, but you can still go to combines. I'll tell you this much. There's always Europe, and there's Canadian ball. CFL has tryouts all throughout America. If you, you know, get through college ball, 
and you're good, and for some reason the NFL just isn't interested in you, try the CFL. Or, you know, there's a card up here, goes to Silas and see this channel. He's doing a little thing on how to play football in Europe and all the various things necessary. He's already got three episodes up, and I think there's a total of five. So, there's that. Again, just because one team says no doesn't necessarily mean that's a front, a front against you. It just means it's a no. It also means it's a temporary no. Because seasons change. <laughs> Teams change so often. Maybe they don't need a wide receiver this year. Maybe they need a wide receiver next year. Maybe they'll need a wide receiver midway through the season because they're the one kind of like, you know, I don't know, did something, got himself in legal trouble and got, you know, got arrested. Not saying I know anybody that's done that, but, I, well, okay. I've heard stories, but I don't personally know anybody who's gotten themselves in such bad trouble they got arrested overseas or whatever, but you never know. I got a job at the fair because of that. I worked in concessions. This is the last little bit of the story. I worked in concessions, and they wanted me to go slice tomatoes. I'd never seen this machine before. I'm a doofus. Basically, it's this little thing, and you push it through blades. And I'd done like 40 tomatoes that way, and I hit an overripe tomato. And I went, and the tomato squished. So I slid the tomato down so I could push it back in the thing. Guess what? I slid, I don't know, can you guys see this? It's really hard to see. But the tip of my finger has a thing. There, there's little blades there, and then there's one on the tip of that finger. I literally had nine slices in the tip of my finger. It's a little gross, I know. Also, you couldn't necessarily tell the difference between the tomato juice and the blood. They had to close down that whole food cart for the day. Yeah, yeah, I was, I was fired. <laughs> but because of that, I was home with like, you know, finger bandages, um, I wound up getting a call from the fair that says, hey, we fired our entire night crew for the cow barn. You're next up. Do you want to come? And I'm like, uh, okay, sure. And I wound up working in the cow barn in the middle of the night for like, you know, 10 days. I wound up getting like a $400 check. This was the year 2000. That was a lot. <laughs> so I'm just saying, just, you never know. So... Just because a no happened now doesn't mean a no will happen in the future. I'm sorry for the long video. Uh, again, Timothy, there's your shout out. I've seen your comments. I remember you from before. I checked the list. You didn't actually win before, so here's yours. Also, I haven't been keeping track for February. I gave up. Uh, we might be keeping track again here soon once the channel starts picking up because spring ball will be picking up here pretty soon. But I will catch you guys next week. Hopefully the weather will be decent. We can do a speed drills. Just things to get you guys faster so that come here through March as the weather's getting nice. You can go out to a field twice a week and just do these things. Just to get faster and faster because I'm getting faster. And if me at 36 can get faster doing these drills, you guys can get faster. I'll catch you guys next week. Bye.